All right, my people, I've got one word on my mind this morning, and that's tenacity. You know, we've heard that word tenacity, and you know, and like with most words, we we just have the general idea of what they mean. And again, we have to push back against being calloused to the depths, the depths of the meanings and what words represent, because there's power in our words. So let me give you an example. We know that in Hebrews 10, 23, it says, let us hold fast to our confession of faith. Confession, profession, you know, hold fast is a form of tenacity. And tenacity, and I've got my, my dictionary right here because I want to be thorough, because I want us to just for a minute, just delve into the depths of a word. I want to paint the pictures in your mind so that you can feel, right? I'm always talking about it. it don't matter how we feel, but I want you for a moment to feel the intensity of the word tenacity. Tenacity basically and simply means the quality or state of being tenacious. Okay, well, that just answers all the questions, right? <laughs> Let's move up one word, tenacious. Ready? It says, holding firmly. Example, a tenacious grip. Um, that, retain, that that retains well. Retentive, okay? That holds together strongly, cohesively, tough. It clings, it's adhesive, it's sticky, it's persistent, stubborn, stubborn. Now that's a word. So when in Hebrews, when it says, let us hold fast to our confession, let us tenaciously hold on to our confession and not allow it to escape us. Let us take that, like like that, that, that bulldog that's jaws lock. You know, at the church we used to be at, they would talk about bulldog um, faith. Grab hold of the word and refuse anything less than the completion of his word in your life. You know, I, I'm dealing with things and I've shared it with, with our people. There's things that, that I'm putting to word to work in my life. There's, um, there's uh, 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 things, words that I'm taking from the word of God that I am constantly, no matter how I feel, no matter what, um, you know, symptoms or circumstance I feel, I am absolutely leaning into the word because I declare that the word of God is ultimate truth in my life. Now, my challenge for you today is for you to evaluate your life and things that's in your life that you know, just pick a thing, you know, Let's put his word to work. I'm not saying let's test God and see if he's real. That's the point is we know that he, he's real. We know that, that it talks about how he watches over his word to see it accomplished. We know that he said that when his word goes out, it'll never return void. It'll serve the purpose that he sent it to accomplish. And that should be mimicked in us. That when we speak his word, it is accomplishing the very things that we sent it to accomplish that there's power in his word, that there is absolute authority in your voice. And it doesn't matter how loud you talk or how quiet you whisper. The power is in the word. The authority is in the word. And we have to recognize that. And we have to completely and totally 100% convince ourselves that his word is ultimate truth. And there, there's no plan B. It's his word or bust, right? And there is no bust if you hold fast to your profession. And you get that down deep inside of you and it becomes reality. Not just an idea, but it becomes the reality and the definition of your life. And you expect what you say to come to pass. You expect his word to manifest in your life. You go one more chapter to Hebrews 11. In Hebrews 11, 3, it says, by faith we understand that the world's were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Well, that's kind of a tongue twister, ain't it? What that's saying is, is everything that you see was created from the unseen and it was created by faith. It was created by the word of God. God said, light be, and the action or the reaction to him saying that statement, light be, light was. There was the light that surrounded, the light that shot in every direction. 4D, 
not just 3D, 4D, that his word is his law supersedes the law of nature. His law is the only law, the law that sets you free from the 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 snares and the the bondage of the curse you have been set free from the curse and that means when there's sickness in your body then you can speak to that sickness and tell it it's got to go and then you build to the point to where you're speaking the word before the symptoms try to come to where you begin to walk in divine health where provision is uh you know it's it's it comes before the need you begin to live a life and life more abundant like it talks about in john 10 10 so that sounds pretty good to me it sounds good to me to to most of all be who he created me to be and he created you to be healthy wealthy secure he created you to be the the voice of authority and dominion on this earth. Amen. So you go and you work that word in your body. You work it up. I'm not talking about connive and, and try to cut corners and work the word to your advantage. He's already made the word to your advantage. He's already established his word as the basis for you going above and never beneath. He don't need you to suffer. Jesus suffered so that you don't have to suffer. So take those words of victory and you you meditate on those words and you speak those words. And every time that that thought that's been sort of um, haunting you or whatever word you want to use, then you open your mouth and you tell that where to go. And you begin to say, but the word of God says that I am more than a conqueror. The word of God says that I have no fear. The word of God says that he will never leave me. And he'll never forsake me all the days of my life till the end. Amen. So be victorious and I love you. I'll see you tomorrow.